Hey, good morning. Welcome to Connect Daily Bread, where we recognize man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So today's reading is going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We start the book of Corinthians today, uh, and renowned to be the most dysfunctional church in all of the New Testament. Uh, they had some major issues going on there. And so this is a church that uh, in Acts 18, we see how they, they end up being planted, uh, reached and planted by the Apostle Paul. Uh, Apollos uh, becomes very influential. He's he's one to Christ and then becomes very, very influential there. So we're going to see his name come up. And really, uh, it's remarkable to see what is addressed first because what's addressed first is division. Uh, that That's the most pressing need that Paul gets to. And it's it stands out because we'll get to some stuff that they were engaged in that was really really uh, shocking, honestly. Uh, but the first thing that Paul touches on is division. Uh, and so, you know, it's thrown around, bro, it ain't that deep. Uh, but in this case, unity is that deep. Division in Christ's church is that deep. Uh, and so just kind of fitting, as we talked about this with All Together Sale, and as we strive towards uh, unity in a spirit that God desires. Uh, so with no further ado, First Corinthians chapter 1. Here we go. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, and called to be his holy people, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of, the, of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge, God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore, do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's household, have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another says, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. Still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized into my in my name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanas. Stephanus. Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom and eloquence, lest the cross be emptied of its power. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. The intelligence of the intelligent, intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of, in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. God was pleased with the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believed. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greek, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, for the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. So it's beautiful to see uh, the intro here. Uh, it is very common to intros and the rest of the letters addressing churches. And Paul laying out uh, that he's apostle by Christ Jesus, the will of God. You know, Sosthenes is with him, so he gets mentioned. 
and he reminds who who we are as disciples the in, in verse 2 so to the church of god in corinth to those who are sanctified in christ jesus and called to be his holy people together with those everywhere who call on the name of the lord jesus so this this picture that that's laid out okay you've been sanctified in christ that's just a fancy way of saying uh you you've been saved and you're being redeemed and made more and more like jesus and that this unity with all the churches everywhere uh, that Corinth was a part of and that Connect is a part of. And then the, the wishing of uh, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We see thankfulness show up. We see uh, a, a reminder of his love for them. We see recognition of some good things going on. And why this stands out to me is because there's so much to be addressed um, here in this church. But Paul doesn't just jump right in and start... Uh, you know, wagging his finger at them and telling them what they're doing that's jacked up. He reminds them of who they are in Christ and reminds them of his love. And then in verse 10, we see Paul addressing this division over church leaders. And so there was something going on there that um, was was divisive and destructive. And it, and it had to do with uh, saying, well, I follow Paul or I follow Apollos and I follow Christ. And even that third one where it should be like, okay, that's what we do. We follow Christ. It there was a spirit of, uh, of pride and division uh, being brought about. And so different modes of, of behavior really so justifying messed up sinful behavior in the name of Paul, Apollo, servants of Christ, and then Christ himself. And so that's something we need to be on guard against, um, that we need to make sure uh, we're certainly not immune to of the preference of human leaders in, a, in an unhealthy and an ungodly way. Well, you know, I follow Lynn, Adam, I follow Josh, I follow, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's really a, a unity that God calls for in the body. And we are all just servants of Christ. Like who are, you know, and that's what Paul gets to. Who are these individuals? It's We're just servants of Christ. Um, and then we, Paul talks about, God's power through the crucifixion being shown, uh, but it's is deemed as wisdom as as foolishness. And uh, 1 Corinthians 1 18, there's just that reality there. The message of Christ is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it's the power of God. And the reality is that um, the cross is only as powerful in an individual's life as that individual chooses and allows for the cross to be. Um, it truly can. The gospel truly can change everything. For someone in, in some amazing radical ways that bless their family, that break cycles, that um, allow for healing and hope where there was brokenness and despair. Uh, but also people can be exposed to the message of Christ, to the message of the gospel and just write it off as whatever. That's foolish. If it even happened, it's just silly. Why would I care? Right. And so for us, it's really important that we. Don't take for granted the message that we've we've found in the gospel, that we embrace it continually. And one of the ways that we do that is, is by uh, gratitude and thanksgiving. And so that would be my encouragement today is to genuinely, sincerely um, thank God for the cross of Christ. Thank God for um, what that has brought about in your life and to join in uh, David's prayer. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. Uh, and that is something that will fuel and drive us. Because we're told about joy, that uh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And joy is appealing, and joy is attractive, and people long for, and, and they want that. Uh, and so it's got to start uh, within us if we want to have the kind of effect on our campuses that God desires to have, and others, many, many others, brought into the kingdom um, we've got to allow ourselves to, to be moved by the cross and we have to intentionally uh, make make an effort for that to take place today and, and just going forward that that not be commonplace. Uh, and then the chapter closes with this caveat, which I love. Okay, so therefore, as is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. And God's word is just so practical. Uh, and we're told here, man, don't boast in, in yourself. Don't boast uh, about who you are, what you what you do or, or what you get to be a part of. 
Um, but to boast in the Lord, um, because that's where all gifts come from. That's that's proper to to boast in the Lord, and I talk about the practicality of it because it is it is normal and natural to long to to long to boast. Um, that's actually not a not an unhealthy or an unholy thing. It's it's uh, woven within us, and so. But we're we're reframed where it's unhealthy and unholy is where that's a focus on self or a focus on just other people. But the the boast and the praise belongs to God. And so thanking him regularly, continually bragging about who our God is, the things that he's doing and the things that he longs to do. Um, That's the way the chapter closes out. So let's boast in the Lord and the salvation that he's brought about. Love you guys. Have a great day.